Today on the show, let's hope Jamie Eisenberg's quarterback picks are better than his movie picks. That's right. I'm coming out firing right now. Post Dang. Father's Day, taking shots already. Welcome to uh, welcome to the show. It's top five week. We're going to give our top five quarterbacks today, kind of debate it. Top five running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, and then a mailbag on Friday. But also in honor of Father's Day, I asked Dave and Jamie to put together a list of the top three. In retrospect, probably should have been top five, but just top three movie dads. And I have a big beef with Jamie's selections here. Uh, that's coming up later on in the show. Happy belated Father's Day, guys. How was your weekend? Good. How was yours? What'd you do? Uh, I didn't have a uh, was your birthday. Was it Father's Day? Yeah, yeah, you better have done some pretty exciting stuff. Well, thank you all uh, on Twitter for uh, the birthday wishes. Birthday was Saturday. Father's Day was Sunday. Actually, my daughter was pretty sick, so we stayed home all weekend. <laughs> she had a fever and a virus. She's fine now, so I'm happy that she's okay. So like everybody else, she's sick of you too? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but she broke out in a rash. So she must have been really sick of me. Uh, but it was, you know, it was just bad timing, I guess, so I really didn't do anything. But I will say... <clears throat> game, how good was Game Seven of the Nets? Of Nets oh, it was fantastic! Was amazing. That was Both a, Game Sevens were good. I felt Agreed. early last night, but yes. Um, it, did you guys see the end of the Islanders Lightning game on no. Saturday? No. Yeah, the, it was like a save at the buzzer. It was no, it was a save by one of the defensemen. I believe he, I don't know what position he played, but it wasn't the goalie. It was. At the buzzer, which you pretty much never see in hockey, the guy on the Lightning made the sickest move to completely juke the goalie, get an empty net, and then this dude just flies in and and stops. I I obviously know nothing about hockey. That was incredible. Please YouTube it. All right. Anyway, let's rock and roll here, guys. Talking about these uh, top five quarterbacks. By the way, we have a Scott Fishbowl draft on YouTube tomorrow night. We'll tell you more about that in a little. Oh, look at that. There it is. And that was with with. Tenths of a second left. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, all right. Stats? But, no. But yeah, we don't go. know his name. Oh, I don't know his name. We know he's on the Islanders. Yeah. Go New York. Go New York. Go New York. Go. In the last two... That's the Islanders song? I didn't know that. The next song. Yeah. Aaron, hey, how was your Father's Day, buddy? Uh, it, was, it was better than Adam singing or, you know, using basketball chants to refer to Islanders hockey. Uh, what did I do? I spent some time in the pool, had some fondue with the kids. Um, you know, as, as the oldest dad on this podcast, I can say that Father's Day really doesn't ever get old. It's it's great to have one day a year where I can just kind of do whatever I want to do. And even then, I still didn't go to the restaurant that I wanted to go to. But never mind. It's okay. <laughs> um, I, saw, I saw somebody post on uh, Facebook. Uh, why are all restaurants filled up on Mother's Day, but on Father's Day, we're expected to barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. Because we like to barbecue. That's yeah. right. Some of us do. And uh, no, I didn't get to have steak on Father's Day. Steak is not a barbecue. I... Burgers You're thinking well, of like burgers and hot dogs. And that's yeah. <laughs> for here, we, here we go. I just, you know, burgers and hot dogs. All right. You know, maybe maybe <laughs> like the connotation of the word barbecue uh suggest those foods what about grilling when you when you hear grilling or smoking yeah. maybe that's when you start to think about other types of meat okay i can dig that let's talk quarterbacks okay. you just want to get on to quarterbacks you don't last want to two seasons aaron Rodgers is the only quarterback to finish in the top six in either format four point or six point passing touchdowns uh the top six he's the only one with fewer than 200 rushing yards and of course he finished uh, i think one in in six point and two and four point leagues last year. So he was well within the top six, but it's been pretty hard the last two years to crack the top six without 200 rushing yards. Uh, so you look at Stafford, you look at cousins, you're not drafting them to be top six quarterbacks, but kind of limits their upside. Uh, and the previous two years, you had at least five 2017, 2018, you had at least five quarterbacks finish in the top 10 with fewer than 200 yards. Um, only three in the last two years, Rodgers twice and Brady once. So it's pretty hard to be even a top 10 quarterback without 200 rushing yards. And that's really where Stafford and Cousins come in and stuff like that because they're not going to get there. And Brady's not going to get there either. Um, and Rodgers right. neither. And now that was 200 based on 16 games. So maybe. Well, they throw 50 touchdowns. I mean, it'll be a different story. Yeah, of course it is. But I think we're seeing more fantasy points store scored by quarterbacks because of the rushing numbers. So it's it's almost like a different game. 
from 2007. In 2017, the top 12 quarterbacks averaged 20.3 fantasy points per game and six point passing touchdowns. Last year, 25.3. But what about 2019? 2019 was 21.6. 2018 was 23.4. Okay, wait, so let me clarify something. I said Rodgers and Brady aren't going to get there. I didn't mean they wouldn't be top 10. I meant they're not going to get to 200 rushing yards. So thank you for just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. And Jamie, last year was such an inflated year for offense. It was the highest scoring year ever, and quarterbacks really, really benefited from it. And what does that mean when you approach quarterback this year? Do we expect something similar, or are we expecting a, a regression of passing stats? There's going to be a regression of passing stats. I think mostly because they were very relaxed with holding calls last year to start the season. You know, that's something I think that was pretty evident. If you watch the game, uh, a lot of it, you know, conspiracy theories about how the refs were calling the game. But I do think that that played in part in the start of the season. You know, you saw a lot of less um, penalties that I think impact quarterbacks. Uh, I think we'll get back to that a little bit, you know, um, as the world is a little bit more normal. Um, so we'll see, uh, but quarterbacks are getting better. You know, I mean, this is something that we've talked about for a couple of years now as seven on seven gets better, as the college game gets better, as the pro game gets better, these guys come into the league more prepared. I mean, you think about it, you know, from Baker Mayfield and Justin Herbert, you know, look what they were able to accomplish in their rookie seasons and just the the, the numbers they were able to post. Uh, Burrow, what he was on his way to doing, you know, prior to the knee injury, you know, these guys come in ready to play. And I think we're going to see, uh, there's obviously guys that are flawed. You know, I mean, we saw it with Tua, for example, last year, but who knows how much that was an injury-related uh, thing. But I think you see guys coming in, you know, at, at a different level. Trevor Lawrence is probably going to put up some some nice numbers, uh, assuming he starts right away. Um, you know, Justin Fields and uh, Mac Jones and Trey Lance and, and Zach Wilson have a chance to put up, you know, good numbers for for rookies comparatively to probably some guys 10 years ago. So um, it's just a, it's a different NFL. And so, yes, they'll be – the numbers will be good, but I think from where they were last year, I'd probably look a little bit closer to 2019 to 2020. Here's a stat I couldn't believe. Dave, I know you saw the same statistic or very similar. Quarterback carries inside the five-yard line in 2020. Josh Allen had nine. This is just, just these three in particular. Josh Allen had nine. Kyler Murray had seven. Lamar Jackson had one carry all season long from inside the five-yard line. I do believe he had two rushing touchdowns of exactly five yards. I'll double-check on that. He but did. Yeah, okay, thank you. His rushing touchdowns, he's so explosive, but he doesn't really even get the goal line carries. And Kyler didn't necessarily either. Allen does. But I just thought that was amazing. Josh, uh, Lamar Jackson, one carry all year inside the five. He had five the previous year. But I couldn't like, what if what if he gets five of those this year? The and one I'll- carry inside the five last year was an aborted snap. Oh. He actually had two carries from exactly five yards out. Both of those went for touchdowns over the past two seasons, eight carries from five yards or closer. That's not a lot. So that's just interesting. If that number goes up, then that could be more rushing touchdowns for Lamar Jackson, who might be number two. We'll find out very soon. We will reveal we will reveal the rankings. Big news. You've all heard about the Scott Fishbowl. Super fun league. I finally participated in it last year. And courtesy of Scott Fish himself, and it's charitable too. We're giving away spots to this year's Scott Fishbowl League. All of all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fantasy football today, and leave your Twitter handle in the comments of this video. And for those of you not familiar with the Scott Fishbowl League, it's about community, networking, and raising money for worthwhile causes. The Scott Fishbowl has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity. This tournament, which drafts in early July, has become known as the unofficial start of fantasy football season for many. And remember, to enter, all you have to do is subscribe to the Fantasy Football Today YouTube channel, comment your Twitter handle on this video. Good luck. And we're going to be live on the YouTube channel tomorrow. Again, it's youtube.com slash fantasy football today. That's Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And we're doing a Scott Fishbowl mock draft. Scott is actually going to join us. And so is professional wrestler Eric Young. He's going to, he, I don't know if he's going to be on the stream, but he's going to be drafting with us. He's on the stream. Oh, good. Nice. Two of the toughest people on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're going to be giving away spots in the Scott Fishbowl 11 leagues to play against Dave and Jamie. So that is, I know this has been a long promo read, but listen, this is important stuff. It's for charity and it's for fantasy football and it's for fun and it's awesome. YouTube.com slash fantasy football today, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you there. Watch our mock draft and comment on this video with your Twitter handle and you could be in the leagues. I'm also going to um, 
give away two spots in the mock draft for people that are already registered in the Scott Fishbowl. So I think it's the, which one did you take out? You took, you took uh, eight, right? Spot eight. Yeah, I think so. So I think we have spots 11 and 12. Op- no, 10 and 11 open in the mock draft that I was going to, uh, I'm going to tweet this out prior to Tuesday, obviously, but, uh, that two people that are already registered for the Scott fishbowl can come and mock with us. So if you have spots 10 and 11, um, and you see that you can, you can take those spots. So they have to be slotted into those spots. Yeah. You know, I, I guess they don't, they want to just come mock. They can come mock with us, but they have to be in the fishbowl already. Got it. So as we talk about the top five quarterbacks, we're not going to spend time on Mahomes. Really? He's number one. Oh, how confident are you in your number two quarterback pick? Very. Um, somewhat. <laughs> okay. Not that, not that he's not going to be great, but that he should be second. That's what I'm saying. Right. I, I get so, that. Right. So is it like, oh, this guy, I feel strongly he should be number two, or is it it's a jumbled mess? Dave, for you, it's Josh Allen. Yeah, I feel good about this. Uh, I think that Josh Allen proved last year that he improved as a passer had all the hallmarks of what a breakout quarterback has. And I don't see anything that's really changed with the Buffalo offense. I don't, I don't see them getting away from Josh Allen. My favorite stat about Josh Allen from, from 2019 to 2020, he averaged seven more pass attempts per game while still rushing for, yeah, he's had at least eight rushing touchdowns each year of his career. So if he's going to continue to be the catalyst of the offense and I don't see that changing, then I think he's just in line to have another massive season. Jamie, who's number two for you? It's Josh Allen, but it's the eight rushing touchdowns that are the concern because uh, that's a high number for most quarterbacks. And if they want to protect him to any level a little bit more and the run game needs to improve, um, you know, the, the, there's been sort of mixed messages from Buffalo going back to the end of last season. Um, I just finished doing our magazine story on second year running backs and doing, you know, some Zach Moss research. Um, from Brandon Bean to Sean McDermott saying how they need to get their run game going a little bit yep. more. And then, you know, you hear some of the comments from uh, other members of their offensive coaching staff saying that they don't really need to change things. But, you know, he's going to be uh, – I, I said this last year, and, and, and I firmly believe it. He's going to be one of the best passing quarterbacks in the NFL. He's shown you that in his, in his third season, I think, going into his fourth year. He's only going to get better, uh, especially if, you know – Emmanuel Sanders is still good and Gabriel Davis takes the next step. Um, But if the rushing touchdowns go away, if they get cut in half, then Lamar Jackson has the chance to be better than him. Then Kyler Murray has a chance to be better than him. Then Dak Prescott has the chance to be better than him. So that's where the concern comes in. It's not that he's not going to be a top five quarterback because I think he will be, but there are very good quarterbacks in the top five. And so it's, uh, you know, a, a, a confident um, assessment of Josh Allen, confident ranking of Josh Allen, but I have just as much confidence in the three guys behind him. So it's not a, uh, a firm. He's slam dunk. Number two. Uh, if you like Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray or Dak Prescott better, I have no problem with that at all. And in some order, Mahomes, Jackson, Prescott, Allen, Murray is the top five for Dave, Jamie and Heath. It's ADP as well, isn't it? I'm sure. I will. Yeah. Six is Wilson for Jamie and and for Heath, and six is Herbert for Dave, with Wilson mm-hmm. coming in at seven, Herbert seven for Jamie. So you guys have the Heath's same the names. Yeah, Heath has Herbert at 11. And, um, okay, so that was my first question. How confident are you in who you named number two, basically? Uh, which non-Mahomes quarterback has the most upside? Lamar Jackson. Yes. Okay. Which, which is why I would, and I might put him too. I might put him three. He's three for me already. Right. Like if right. So if if Adam were to say, How confident are you in number three? I've got Kyler Murray there. That's one where I might go, eh, let's see what happens in, in camp this summer. There was a really good report about how Sammy Watkins was fitting into the offense during mini camp. There's the difference. <laughs> Listen, they need you know what you're gonna get. You're drafting Lamar Jackson to be a rusher, right? Thousand yards <laughs> each of the last two seasons. You need him to be better as a passer. No, you Playing don't because he was yes, fantastic two years ago. He was the yeah, MVP. But he, he wasn't was as good. He didn't have three thousand yards passing. If he it didn't matter. Three, yes, <laughs> really? He wasn't was he quarterback one last year? 
Uh, no, because he no, regressed, he was but he was two years ago, and he was a record breaker two years right, ago. Right, but we're not talking about two <laughs> years ago. Last year was terrible. It's not just Sammy. It's Bateman as well. It's Brown taking the next step. Uh, and, but overall, it's Lamar Jackson. He's got to be a better passer. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. No, he, he doesn't. Otherwise, he's he's going to be as good as he was last year. He won't be quarterback one. Or he can be as good as he was two years ago, and he won't be quarterback one. He had 36 one. touchdowns two years ago, Jamie. He had 11 deep passing touchdowns. He was that a good matter. passer He was still the number ago. one quarterback. You can tell me whatever he was or he wasn't. He was number one. Okay, so I I guess the 10 saying. touchdowns through the air was not a difference at all from last year. Did he have Sammy Watkins two years, two years ago? ago? Of course not. Okay, so it didn't matter. <laughs> No, but what, what Dave, what you're saying is that he needs to pass more like he, he did. Needs to be, he needs to be a more efficient passer. It's no, simple as that. If, he, if he's going to be QB1, he's no, he got to be a more efficient he doesn't passer. Have to be That's more what efficient happened passer. to Josh Allen last year. That's what happened to Kyle Murray last year. He doesn't need to be more year. efficient to be number one. Be he already exactly proved it. You're right. You know but, what? He's probably going to get 1,500 yards and 12 rushing touchdowns, and, and that'll be what carries him. Okay, but Sammy Watkins is going to make him be the number one I didn't say. I just There it is. Sammy Watkins. Here you go. Go, Sammy. Go. If Sammy Watkins gets him seven hundred yards and four touchdowns and Bateman gives him the same and he completes a higher percentage of his passes and he's going to be able to throw for 3,200 yards. That's not a very high bar, Jam. And 30 touchdowns, which is like almost right in between where he was last year and the year before, then he can be QB1. He needs to be a better passer to be QB1. What's so interesting about Lamar Jackson, he was QB10 last year and he scored... 383 points in six point per passing touchdown leagues. And that would have been better than almost every quarterback in 2019, you know, but he, but he was QB 10. Uh, I think he would have been QB three uh, in 2019 with those numbers and probably in four point per passing touchdown leagues, probably would have been QB one in 2019. And um, I think he finishes QB eight or something like that. And by the way, like, you can make fun of Sammy Watkins. He's going to be a better receiver for them than Miles Boykin was last year, or than Willie Sneed was yes, for them last year. Weapons, but Sammy he's got Watkins better weapons. Be no, no, no. I'm not saying that Sammy Watkins is going to be the difference, but he's somebody who stepped up in offseason mini camps. I'm not saying go draft. You, you know what? If you want to draft Sammy Watkins with your last pick, be my guest. But I think that having better receivers will help Lamar Jackson be a better quarterback. Lamar's got to throw. I've already made that clear. But well, my receivers question. who don't make mistakes will help him too. He he needs to have a better year of throwing, but it really was mostly just the touchdown rate, which was still really high for him. But he, I think he went from what thirty six to twenty six touchdowns. Yes. So, actually, when you look at his numbers, I think he's better when he throws less. Yep. And that's my. I don't want him to throw the ball more. He could have better passing stats all he wants. I don't want it to come at the expense of his rushing stats, and I don't know that it will because he is who he is, and he's still going to lead all quarterbacks in rushing yards. But is he going to? get to over a thousand yards again, you know, is he going to get to 1300? Cause that's basically what he's been on pace for in 16 games. He's been not close to 1300. If so, he's not over a thousand rushing yards, then he's not going to be a top five quarterback. Unless he's a really good passer. Right. I don't, I don't want to see him throw the ball at the expense of his rushing, but I've seen, you know, we've seen stretches where he throws the ball a lot and he still runs the ball a lot. So it's, you know, he's not, he's not going to get away from what he does. His All right. best fantasy production came when he stopped throwing as much in the second half of the season. Yeah. Post, times post COVID. Well, he had more he, right after COVID. There were five games, right? He had four touchdowns in those five games. He was more efficient as a runner in those games. He he really didn't see that many more rushes. It was like one rush attempt per game more. No, when he, you average it out, he just was so much more efficient. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which quarterback? Which top six quarterback has the most downside? Uh, I mean, can I say Russell Wilson, even though he's not in my top six? Yes. There it is. Kyler, I think, because you saw the injury and what it did to him. Okay. Yeah. I could say the same thing about Dak, though. He had a pretty bad injury and you saw what it did to him. Sure. I mean, Russell Wilson, there's a lot of uncertainty, I guess. New offense. It's a good pick. Um, kind of an iffy situation with the franchise. Last year, we had Josh Allen as QB 11 in ADP and Aaron Rodgers with QB, QB 10. They were two of the best values in fantasy. The year before, Lamar Jackson was QB 11 and ADP. Do you see someone who's going in that range that could finish as QB 1 this year? Hurts. Dave, good good answer. Good there. I think that's a good answer. I think Tannehill's a good answer. Okay. I think I think there's a... Nah, I'm not going to say it. Never mind. I was going to talk up the rookies, but I don't think they could be QB 1. All right, Lawrence, let's get... Lawrence, good. It'd take a huge stretch. I, I, I think Lance could too. 
but it's I just I don't want to say it's such a thing. I don't see Lance starting enough games. That's a problem. It it would come with the caveat that he starts week one. Sure. Okay, then let's get into the rankings. Mahomes is one, and I think some other show will probably talk about how far ahead he should be of the rest. Josh mm-hmm. Allen is not that far. I don't think he should be that far ahead. Ahead in terms of finish or ahead in terms of draft? Draft. Um, he's going to get drafted ahead of the field probably by, how, by a round. How many picks? By a round, at least. Yeah, that's, that doesn't strike me as too dramatic. You know, I, what right. I don't think should be is like he should be a second round. I don't think it, we should see Mahomes go in the second round, which we would never do, and then everybody else go in like late round four or something. But you say we, we would never do. Uh, again, you know, I, I, I hate to keep revealing our magazine draft, but we draft with people that aren't on our site and, you know, people that play fantasy, and Mahomes went in round two. Yeah, but it wasn't a CBS guy who did it. No, but that, I mean, his average draft position is going to be round two. That, that's probably going to be realistic of what we see in drafts this year is Mahomes will be a top 24 pick. Someone will take him in every draft around then. I don't think it's inaccurate to say that we, at least Adam, Dave, Jamie, Heath, Chris, would never take him in round two. No, but Heath takes him in round three pretty regularly. And yeah, to be honest, you know, remember we, we talked about um, lessons learned from a, was it that was that, that episode? Lessons learned from a 2020 draft. And mm-hmm. Dave, you had that sick team, Jamie, you beat him in the finals. You had like the six. Yeah. Season. Thanks for the reminder. That's you great. knew Jamie, obviously you knew you wouldn't get Mahomes with your fourth pick. So you took him 25th. You took him, you had the first pick overall. You took McCaffrey and then nope. I, you took Mahomes in the third round, but with the first pick of the third round, I, I typically have my number one quarterback ranked in my top 200, almost annually, somewhere between 25 and 30. So, um, that's where Mahomes was ranked uh, i felt comfortable taking him at the turn and so um you know i i, I you know if, if i'm ever going to pull the trigger on on the top quarterback it's going to be there and so a lot of drafts i do try to do different things that was one that i tried to do something different and so mahomes at 25 i mean most most times i'm not going to take the first quarterback okay josh allen two who do you guys have third lamar I have kyler kyler versus lamar Oh, so Jamie, why are people so confident in Lamar Jackson after a disappointing year last year? I mean, it just goes back to what we talked about. You see what the upside is. You see what he can be. He could be the best quarterback in fantasy, and he's going to, as you said, lead most quarterbacks in rushing production. Um, to Dave's point, they did give him better weapons, you know, which is uh, a plus if those guys are going to contribute. Um, you know, again, uh, referencing some things from the offseason, uh, Jeff Sreebeck, who covers the Ravens for the Athletic, uh, just wrote this morning, uh, Monday morning, uh, stock up, stock down, no changes from the mini camp. And stock up for him was J.K. Dobbins because of his work in the passing game. And if he does get oh, more yeah. work in the passing game, you want to talk about uh, easy ways to help Lamar Jackson's throwing is throw to your running backs, you know, because those guys are going to be in space, wide open, um, you know, and you, you see what their ability to do running the ball. You know, Edwards is five yards per carry. Dobbins was six yards per carry. And so if they can do that with the ball in, in their hands in different ways. Um, and speaking to Dobbins last week, you know, he said he made mistakes as a pass catcher last season. And he can improve in that area of his game this year. And and Zrebeck wrote that he had one drop and the rest of the time he looked like a fluid pass catcher. So um I think if, you know, that's an area that Lamar Jackson improves on easy throws. And again, it could be Watkins helping him. It could be Bateman helping him. It could be Marquise and, and Mark Andrews helping him. But um, anything he does better as a passer is only going to enhance his game. But his 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 game two years ago, if that's the same guy you get, you're going to get a top three quarterback for sure. Dave, why did you go with Kyler Murray over Lamar Jackson? Loved what I saw from him until he got hurt last year. He was averaging 32 fantasy points per game through his first nine games. And doing way more as a rusher. And if, if there's a nitpick on on Kyler, it's that he probably won't do as much as a rusher. Although I could still see him being a good red zone threat. I don't know if the yardage will quite be there. But I think his passing efficiency, which went up from his rookie year to his second year, can go up again. I, I like the addition of Rondell Moore. I like the addition of A.J. Green. I'm not, again, two guys that are good late round picks, not necessarily guys that are going to blow up for fantasy, but guys that will help Kyler be a better passer. And I also think that we'll see this Cardinals offense take a few more deep shots. I think that that's something that could help him just get some more smash points over the course of games and turn some of those 25 to 28 point games into 30, 33 point games, something like that. I think that the schedule is um, is pretty good for him. Eighth best 
projected strength of schedule from among quarterbacks. I think that'll help him. And I think he'll be in a lot of high scoring games. And I think he's a playmaker with the football. So I feel a little safer with him than I do over Lamar Jackson at this point. If if Lamar looks good throwing the football, the reports are good about him throwing the football. And if the reports out of Arizona say you keep saying that Kyler's gonna run less, then a switch should be made. But until then, I'm I'm sticking with Kyler at three. They both have good cases to be number two because Jackson was uh, number QB one in 2019 and Murray was QB one before his injury. And this is an interesting quote from Kyler Murray. Uh, he said, and Dave, you just alluded to it talking about how the Cardinals are saying he's going to run less. Honestly, the way I see it is my leg should be a luxury. And it kind of wasn't like that last year. It was me having to run for us in a sense. Once my shoulder was banged up and I wasn't trying to put myself out there and take those hits, we hit a lull. Honestly, I think it was a lesson for us. We can't be one-dimensional. We've got to be better in all aspects of the game. It's a very interesting quote. And obviously, it means their offense was better when he was running because he was he's saying, you know, he stopped running basically. He didn't want to take those hits after the shoulder injury. But also, he doesn't want to get hurt, right? <laughs> and he's they've got to be able to be more balanced. So I don't really know what to make of it. I, I, my thing is, like, if, if the guy's great at running, he's going to be... He's going to run. We've seen it from quarterbacks for so many years. And then like in the case of even quarterbacks like Cam Newton, where they try and make a change and really encourage him to run less and throw more. Eventually the coaches throw in the towel and they say, man, go do what you got to do. I think Cam had a quote, like you don't tell a lion to change. So why would they tell me to change something like that? I'm, it's a terrible paraphrase. Well, it's but. the guys who evolve as passers. I mean, you know, you, you, you've seen it with Josh Allen, you know, over the course of where he ran, his rookie season, the touchdowns are still there for him, but the, the rushing yards have come down. Um, you know, Randall Cunningham evolved as a, as a quarterback. Uh, Russell Wilson has evolved as a quarterback, you know, um, Steve Young, John Elway, you know, guys that ran early in their careers and, and ran less as their, as, as their bodies took more hits as they got older, as they got better throwing the ball. So I think the thing for Kyler is um, kind of reading between the lines with his, his, his quote uh, one, is the run game going to be better to support him? And that's a question mark because we know the the guys that they brought in, you know, or the guy that they brought in to replace the guy that they lost, James Conner to replace Kenyon Drake, feels like a wash at best. Um, and it, it Chase Edmonds, is he getting a bigger role? Well, they had him on the team last year and he didn't really do a great job running the ball when he got the opportunity. So is the run game going to be able to support him? But the other side of it is the offensive line with the addition of Rodney Hudson. Does that make things better in terms of their run game overall? And so... Uh, does he have to do more? But, you know, bringing in Rondell Moore speaks to hopefully some some better throwing opportunities, another year of comfort with DeAndre Hopkins and uh, the addition of A.J. Green. So it's going to be an interesting season for Kyler Murray. But again, you know, you're you're looking for what the upside is with these guys. And and that's why these guys are top five quarterbacks, you know. So Kyler is going to still be Kyler, you know, and hopefully he doesn't get banged up again. And and that's the, the thing you got to be concerned about, I think, the most with him is not necessarily what the production can be. It's, you know, will he stay healthy over the course of 17 games? Okay, so right now it's Mahomes, Allen, and Kyler for Dave. Mahomes, Allen, and Jackson for Jamie. Who's number four, Dave? For me, it's Lamar. Have we talked about him enough? I'm not sure. <laughs> Jamie, who's number four? <laughs> Kyler. Okay. All right, so then number five is Dak Prescott? Yep. Yep. Okay, so let me make the case that Dak Prescott should be higher. Just going to make the case. He was QB2 in 2019, his last full season. And he was QB one per game. What was yep, it? He was one in both formats. He was QB. I have him per game as QB four in six point per passing touchdown leagues and QB one in four point last. No, he was I've one in six points. I've got him one at six point. If you include his, yeah, you got to lower the, the threshold to four and three quarters games. Okay. Well, if you, if you include the fifth game, fftoday.com has him as four behind Rogers, Mahomes and Allen pretty close, but yeah, he did get hurt in that game. So if you're just looking at the first four games, he's probably QB1. He's almost certainly QB1. No, I've gone QB1. I am at QB1. He's QB1 with games. the five games. Right. Per game? Yeah. Uh, six points for passing touchdown. 29.1, yeah. I believe, is the number. I'm sorry. 29.6. All right. Uh, yeah, that's what happens when you use different sources. But either way, it's an easy case to make for Dak Prescott because he's been elite twice in a row. So why is he fifth? Injury, you know, just is he going to be the same guy coming back? Hopefully that's the case. He's saying all the right things. But again, you know, it's uh, I'll go back to what you you and you asked about QB2. 
I would not be surprised if he's QB1. You know, I mean, if they're going to throw the ball like we saw last year, and I don't know why they would be so far away from that. I agree with you, Adam, that you what you said time and time again, that they're not going to throw as much, but I don't think they're going to be cut in half. I don't think it's going to be cut in a third. I think it's going to be, you know, five attempts in that range uh, off of what he was last year. He's going to be above 40 pass attempts. This offense is going to still run through him as much as Ezekiel Elliott has bounce back potential, which I think he does. But, you know, you don't bring in C.D. Lamb. You don't have all these weapons that they have. Signing Amari Cooper last year. Still have Michael Gallup on the roster. Blake Jarwin coming back. What Zeke does out of the backfield. I mean, this is a, a fantastic offense. And, you know, I think uh, Dak is going to continue to be successful. He'll run enough. Uh, that you'll you know still be comfortable with him. He's not Lamar or Kyler, but he's going to run enough. Again, another quarterback that's evolved as a passer. And so th there, there's no reason. Like, if you go into your draft saying, I have to have a top five quarterback, and you see almost everywhere that Dak is five, and you know how your league drafts, then you just wait it out. If it's yep. the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round, wherever you think Dak is going to go, you pull the trigger on it. He's going to be just as good as other, other guys. And as you said, or as you pointed out, uh, maybe better. You should feel very comfortable taking Dak as a top five quarterback for sure. Could he finish his QB one? Uh, that's where I maybe have even more of a sticking point. I'm just not sure if he runs enough to do that and if he can make up for it with crazy amounts of passing. I know but he that, runs as much as Mahomes does. I mean, there's not much difference. Yeah, I know. But like, I, I, I think there's a higher ceiling for Mahomes with passing Agreed. stats as there is for Dak Prescott. Last year, even though he was averaging 29.6 in those first five, his first game, 19 fantasy points. He was doing miserable in his fifth game. So there, I think there's a little less consistency for, for Dak. I think it, I looked it up today. It's 22 or more fantasy points in 13 of his past 21 games. That's good. That's a 62% hit rate. But I think we can do better. I think you can do better when it comes to a healthy Kyler, a fully functional Lamar, a Josh Josh Allen doing what he does last year, and of course Mahomes. So I think there's like a little bit of a, to a lot bit of a higher ceiling with the other four quarterbacks, which isn't to say that Dak's bad. He's going to be very good for your fantasy team. He's better than you know 27 other quarterbacks in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that Prescott, when you talk about upside, a lot of upside is just something that we have a hard time predicting. It's impossible to predict. Basically, is touchdown passes. Who could have seen Aaron Rodgers having the touchdown? But he had nine percent touchdown rate last year. Um, Dak Prescott has never had a touchdown rate above 5%. And that's actually pretty incredible that he's been so successful without having one of those wacky outlier years. That's where he could become QB one. Um, cause I've made this point. You just look at his numbers. He's been a very consistent quarterback What what they started doing was throwing the ball more the last two years when Kellen Moore took over and they've been a very pass heavy team. They were second in the NFL in pass attempts last year. And in the first four games, he was averaging 50 pass attempts per game. That's obviously not going to happen. <clears throat> but um, but what if he has what, what if he has a seven percent touchdown rate? What if he has an eight percent touchdown rate? Then he probably will be QB one, you know, or very very close to it. So that's it. It's just for him, he's a decent rusher, and he's you know a good passer. Probably going to be around five thousand yards, right? But will he have the crazy touchdown year? He hasn't had it yet. There's no reason why he can't have it again. It just maybe they need to be a little more committed to throwing the ball near the end zone. Maybe I don't. Maybe they're just smashing it in with Zeke too much. I don't know. But um, that's been the like Mahomes touchdown rate: eight point six percent, five point four, six point five. This last three years, and that's like that's not even super high. Those last two: five point four and six point five. Dak has never been even at five percent, above five percent. Okay, um, and then how big of a gap is there between? Prescott and whoever number six is for you, it's Jamie, it's Wilson, and uh, for Dave, it's Herbert. There's a gap there that's at least the same as it would be from Mahomes to Allen. So at least one round, I would want to wait before going after Justin Herbert. Jamie, what do you think? How big of a gap? Yeah, around. I mean, I think, you know, Wilson is, uh, the, the more you hear about them throwing more, the more people are going to get excited about him. Um, you know, you, you saw, again, if you want to talk about first half for Kyler, first half for Russell, yeah, uh, was was absolutely through the roof, and you know I think you just look at what his his upside can be um, if they allow him to be him. And you know we we saw again we saw it last year. Uh, I don't think that their defense is going to be as good as it was when they were playing some of the teams they were playing. Uh, run game is is going to be fine, I think. But uh, this is Russell's offense. You know I think they've made that pretty clear. 
Um, I, I'm very confident in what I've seen from this offseason, uh, the commitment to him, the draft, and what they did, um, the offense coordinator and, and, and the new system they're employing, what you're hearing from the receivers about them being more creative. I think Russ is going to have a potential huge season. I think you're right, Adam, that this could be his MVP year. Right. I made that case. I just, I just feel like the whole franchise is about Russell Wilson right now. If they want to keep him, they really need to let him go out and just dominate. And what happened at the end of last year was the, you know, I have the quote, Let's see if I can find the quote. I can tell you what happened statistically after the wild card loss. I was, this was an ESPN article talking about all this, this is statistical regression, but here's actually the quote uh, from, from Pete Carroll. Uh, Carroll regretted that the Seahawks didn't adjust better to the way opponents were defending their deep passing uh, in the play action game. Traditionally a big part of Seattle's offensive success. And then he said, quote, that doesn't mean we throw the ball over their head all the time and going for just bombs, but there's a lot of space we create in the play passing game. And it seemed like during the course of the season, after the halfway point, we had hit so much early. We had been so effective that people found a way to stay back and just try to bleed us and make us have to throw the ball underneath. And we were maybe really going for it more than we needed to and didn't take advantage of switching gears a bit there as effectively as we would like. Pretty candid admission that defenses adjusted to them and they did not adjust properly to them. Why they got rid of who they got rid of and brought in who they brought in. Exactly. I just can't really think of a of a quarterback. What's the only thing that scares me a little bit about my MVP prediction is can you think of a quarterback that finishes like a top three fantasy quarterback with a new offensive coordinator? I mean, that wasn't already on the staff because it happened for Dak with Kellen Moore and it happened for Lamar Jackson with Greg Roman, who was on the staff in 2018 but became the offensive coordinator in 2019. It was a little gimmicky, but I don't. I just don't love the lack of continuity there for Wilson. You, you mean just, in the same year? Yeah, like like Brady second half of the year seemed to click with Bruce Arians, but just quarterbacks learning a new offense. I don't love it, and that's what's happening with with Wilson. And like I said, it happened with Dak with a new coordinator. It happened with Lamar with a new coordinator. They finished two and one, uh, respectively. But those guys were already on the coaching staff. They weren't. Complete. Well, I guess Roman did completely overhaul things, but I'm not sure you can draw much conclusion, much parallels there between the Lamar Jackson offense and what this is going to offense going to look like in Seattle. Yeah, I, I don't know if I worry about it with a veteran guy like this that has his weapons in place and plenty of time to learn whatever new nuances. I don't know if it's a new system that's going to be completely overhauled. They're obviously going to change things, but I, I think they're going to play to Russell's strengths. Okay. All right, let's take a break here. And uh, when we come back, we will talk about the best movie dads. Yeah. And some news and notes from around the NFL. We'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I got to <laughs> admit to you, my friend texted me with his top, I think he did like his Mount Rushmore of movie dads. And one of them, he had the same as Jamie. And I was like, that is a terrible pick. So you know what? We'll do the news and notes after. Let's go. Let's do the top three movie dads. Who wants to go first? Well, I don't think we should waste any time. I think we should get to write to Jamie so that you can. I agree. Who, who cares who I picked at this point? Jamie, your top three movie dads? Yeah, it was all very serious and a lot of thought put into it. Um, John McClane, <laughs> just to piss you off because I know you hate the fact that he's a great dad. Um, uh, Blue from Rio. Great Christmas because, dad. Great Christmas great, dad. Great Christmas dad. That's true. Good point. <laughs> uh, Blue from Rio because it's the only movie where my cousin's a father. Uh, and uh, Dom from Fast and the Furious because I was thinking of what's the worst, like, franchise that has a parent in it and he just became a father in the fate of the furious i believe uh the the last movie and so i just thought that would be as goofy as possible so i picked uh dominic toretto from fast and the furious never seen fast and the furious can't argue with that one but obviously john mcclain who that was my friend started his mount rushmore with that is a terrible pick he is never a father i don't well, that's wrong what's that that's wrong he goes with his son to russia Yes, exactly. That's what I was saying. He's actually a father in the fourth one with his daughter. Well, but I don't know. Father how, in all of them. No, but he doesn't play a father. That, that's just ridiculous. Well, the reason he went to the reason he went to Nakatomi Towers was to see Holly Gennaro and to go see his kids. Okay, so Die Hard is a fatherhood movie. That's what you're telling me. No, it's not a fatherhood movie, but he is a father. How many things can you guys get wrong about Die Hard? I don't understand. You're just, asking us or you're asking yourself? No. <laughs> Get Sousa back on the on the show. I, he'll, he'll tell, tell us. 
<laughs> um, all right. So McLean, Blue from Rio, and Dom from Fast and the Furious. I completely right. re- reject uh, John McLean. He does not act in a parenting role at all. Uh, well, that he is- does. We just said that. No, he, but he doesn't. Wouldn't and you want your dad movie, to does. save tons of innocent people yeah, from he is, he is burglar a, terrorists? He's not a great dad in that movie. And actually, I, I think the 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 wait a minute. The fourth one is the daughter, right? Yes, that's the why. The fifth one is Russia. Yeah, this is the worst movie ever. Right, so it's two back to back where he's dead. Yeah, wait a long time. Gosh, you no, to- where I'm sorry, it's two back to back where he's focused on his children solely. Right, but that's like twenty plus years. I don't remember when Die Hard Four came out after the franchise started. I mean, that's a long time. Okay, I mean, Dave, what do you got? Top three. It's not going to be an exciting Die Hard film if if it's John McClane making eggs for his kids in the morning. <laughs> that's true. We'll see. Dave will have a better list, and you'll see why John McClane is does, should not qualify. Go ahead. All right. So Darth Vader, ruler of the galaxy, and he, you know, hard, strong, Wait. red line when it comes to everything, but not killing his own kids. And then he wanted to rule the galaxy with his son. He oh, he, right. he came to love his son, and then he saved his son. Oh, you're spoiling everything for me right now. Yeah, sorry. Uh, next up is uh, King Jaffe Jaffer. Jaffe Jaffer from Coming to America, ruler of Zamunda, <laughs> willing to, you know, not only was he the master of all that he surveys, but he was also a concerned dad and was willing to clean up his son's mistakes by offering one and then two million American dollars to the owner of McDowell's just in case he was unhappy with his son messing around with his daughter. And then you've got Mufasa from The Lion King, who was the leader of the animal kingdom. Uh, just an amazing guy who sacrificed like himself. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, th- I'm getting to that. Like <laughs> Mufasa sacrificed himself to yeah. save his son, and then his son took over and followed in his footsteps. Three admirable fathers, all played by James Earl Jones, who's America's dad. It's an open and shut case. That's pretty <laughs> it's pretty good, man. Uh yeah, I uh I think if you're gonna go James Mufasa, Earl Jones also played Terrence Mann before Terrence Mann was Terrence Mann. That's a good I, point. Yes, I very true. You, uh, I think you got to go Harry Stamper if you're going to go Mufasa because he saved the entire planet. This is Bruce Willis. If you want Bruce Willis on there. Sure. From Armageddon, Armageddon, right? Yeah. 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 That's, okay. true. That's a massive sacrifice. He's the father of Earth in that movie. And he did it while saving his future son-in-law. It's true. So my top three movies. They know that Ben Affleck would leave Liv Tyler for a slew of other women. <laughs> yeah, he would have nuked the world if he had known. It's true. So my top three movie dads are Brian Mills. That I think that's just such an easy one. That's Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson and Taken. Sure. Uh, he just can a dad do more for a kid? No. Well, I mean, not allowed to get kidnapped would probably be the first thing. <laughs> well, he did not want her to go. But he let her. His mom drove her, her to the mom, airport. Mom really let drove her. her to the airport. I don't know. Ah, terrible choice by you. All right, next. <laughs> Don't allow me again. Uh, Daniel Hillard, Robin Williams, and Mrs. Doubtfire. It's my number two. That's some serious one. sacrifice for yeah, the first kids. Yep. But again, should have been a better husband when he got divorced. That's a great to. point. So, a great so far, point. you're over two. All right, next. Yeah, but you can say the same about John McClane. Right. No, Although but we saw the divorce. Back together. Wait, we McClane saw the divorce. We saw the divorce happen to Mrs. Doubtfire. You don't no, know. Remember, she left, never got back together. She left to go to California for her career. She left him. I don't so, think they divorced. I think they just separated, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. John and Holly just separated, and then they got back together, and then they divorced. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say uh, Daniel Hillard, worse husband than John. <laughs> Nick? I just not a husband of the century. No, I, well, but that's why they got divorced, though. Worse husband. Uh, Clark, Gris- their father. Clark Griswold is number three. Oh, that's a good one. That's a very good one. That's a good one. All right, let's see. What but, the- but again, if we want to nitpick here, different children <laughs> with the same name. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what father is he? he can't even keep track he of couldn't keep his own kids <laughs> all right uh let's so, see. so far john mcclain's better than all three years uh thornton melon that's a good one thornton melon is fantastic thornton melon is going Very wayne zelinski that's rick moranis and honey i shrunk the kids there's another going he shrunk his kids what, how can it be good they got back yeah. to normal size he gave right. a good adventure chris gardner from pursuit of happiness i never oh, seen. oh that's that. a great one but that's- again made his kids sleep in the bathroom I just that that movie looks way too sad for me. No, it's a great movie. Oh, all right, uh, Mr. Levenstein. That's American Pie. Eugene, very Levin, good dad. Levin. Yeah, great eyebrows. Got to vote for Mufasa. <laughs> great eyebrows. <laughs> great eyebrows. Arthur Weasley from Harry Potter. I don't know. 
No idea. Yeah. yeah. When I think of Weasley, I think of Ronald and his brothers. I don't think of the dad. The dad is, I, I, I do remember some parts where the dad came through, but I don't know if that's the best dad. Was Vito Corleone a good father? Of course. Yes. That's a really good father. Although he got his son killed. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? That's that's so good. All right, maybe that's bad. <laughs> um, Kyle Reese. Is Kyle Reese the Terminator? Kyle Reese is the father of John Reese, of John Connor. Right. Yeah. Kyle Reese was the one who went back to save Sarah Connor in the first one. Yeah, the first Terminator, right. Okay, yeah. not bad. Let's see. Um, but an absent father. Um, someone is at my front door right now. What's that? Huh? All about? Someone's at my front door right. At my front door when we started too. It's FedEx and calling me. Um, oh, okay. So I should probably go soon. So why don't you guys let's do some news and notes? News and notes. Uh, what are we seeing about T. Higgins? Good stuff. Good. A couple of good reports. Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator, saying that T. Higgins is noticeably more explosive this summer. Yeah, we talked about this. Uh, I think last week about how he um added muscle but lost weight. And so good sign for uh, hopefully him not losing targets and losing opportunities and still being a, a special talent for the Bengals with the addition of Jamar Chase. So he's going to end up being a great value pick, I think, for a lot of people because he's yep. going to go as the second Bengals guy. As we said, Tyler Boyd's going to go probably as the third Bengals guy. So uh, PPR is going to be fantastic. But um, Jamar Chase still has to learn the NFL. Uh, T. Higgins has already got his you know foot in the door. And you know hopefully full offseason with Burrow keep them – Still playing at a very high level, so I have no problem taking T. Higgins as a hopefully number three receiver, but if he's my number two guy, I'm fine with that. I agree, and I think you could make the case that he could be the Bengals' best receiver by the end of the year. We don't know for sure that Jamar Chase is going to adapt completely to the NFL game. As yeah, I, I, would, I would probably say the beginning of the year more so than the end of the year because I think Chase will have what typical rookies do, which is where they pick things up, so... He could be the one that gets them off to the good start because of the rapport already established. I know obviously Chase has played with Burrow in college, but um, the offensive staff knows him the best. And so, you know, Chase could, uh, it, it could almost be like how Thielen and Jefferson were, where Thielen still put up good numbers, but a lot of it was such non-dependent. You know, Higgins might be the same type of guy. All right, guys. So we got really not much notes to get to, but we'll talk about it. Uh, I want to talk about the Broncos running backs, the Jaguars running backs. We'll talk about that on the Tuesday episode, which is our top five running backs. I want to thank Dave and Jamie, the best dads in the fantasy football industry. Yeah. And Schrager, who will at some point be a great dad, I am sure. Um, we will talk to you on Tuesday with our top five running backs.